There's no such thing as a free lunch, and that especially applies to the world of finance. Everything is presented as a trade-off between risk and reward, but how can we quantify how much reward we should be getting for how much risk we are taking? And is there a way we can get the most amount of reward without taking too much risk? Well, in today's video, we're going to explore just that topic using the basics of modern portfolio theory. And hopefully after watching today, you too will be able to balance your portfolio better to match your particular risk level. Maybe this will change your entire view on risk and how you go about making even basic life decisions. Now, as a warning, there is a little bit of math in today's video, but don't worry, we're going to make it as easy as possible. We will be also including an Excel sheet example in the description below. So when you're done with today's video, you can download the sheet and see how some of the math works for yourself. Also, feel free to use the sheet to help develop your own approach to portfolio management and investment. But a quick disclaimer, we're not suggesting that this is the best or only way to manage a portfolio, and there are many things you should consider with your financial advisor before investing. Now without further ado, let's dive into the concepts surrounding modern portfolio theory. As a bit of history, modern portfolio theory, or MPT, was first detailed by Harry Markowitz. Markowitz theorized that everything should have a risk and return trade-off, and that this balancing act could be applied to any asset so long as there was an appropriate measure for risk. Markowitz suggested that an asset's volatility was a good metric to use to assess total risk. In other words, the more volatile an asset's price, the more risk this asset posed to an investor, and vice versa. If there was little volatility, then there was little risk posed to the investor. What Markowitz also noticed was that the riskier assets had the ability to pay off more than the less risky assets. However, riskier assets had a better possibility of losing more than less risky assets. And this is where the risk-reward payoff structure resides. For his work, Markowitz was given the Nobel Prize in Economics, which is probably the highest honor an economist can receive. So on to the math. Markowitz suggested the following. Assets move in correlated and uncorrelated ways to one another. Therefore, some assets would move together in a similar fashion, while others might move in dissimilar fashion, or even a negative fashion. Therefore, Markowitz believed that correlations and covariances between assets were important. He summarized this relationship in a covariance matrix we'll call sigma. Sigma can be thought of as a matrix made up of the time series covariances of each asset. Some assets will have higher covariances, while some will have lower covariances. But this still doesn't answer the question of how much of each asset you should have in your portfolio. What Markowitz also considered was that there was an infinite combination of allocations between assets a person could put into their portfolio. However, there was only a subset of combinations that he believed to be the efficient allocations. These efficient allocations lived along a curve, which Markowitz called the efficient frontier. Allocations which lived along this efficient frontier were considered to have the best reward for a given level of risk. So how do we calculate this curve using our covariance matrix? For this, we need to do a little more math. We know that we can have some set of portfolio weights for each of our assets. We will call this portfolio vector of weights W. If we multiply a vector of weights by our covariance matrix, multiplied again by the transpose of our vector weights, we get a volatility squared term. You can multiply any set of weights by sigma to arrive at your portfolio's volatility squared term. What we want to know is when is this value minimized for a given level of returns? We will call this level of returns R. So how do we calculate R? Well, that's up to you. There are a few ways to do this, and we will discuss some ideas later on in this video. But let's just say for now that each of the assets we have calculated has an expected return value we believe is appropriate. We will put these return values into a new vector called mu. If we multiply mu by the transpose of our weights w, then we get a portfolio return of r. Multiplying by the transpose of our weights is the same as multiplying our expected return of each of the asset's portfolio weights and then summing them together. This is also known as a dot product. Now that we have our two equations, we want to minimize one and maximize the other. In other words, we want to minimize risk 
and maximize return. Because these two systems are consistent and undetermined, we get a curve as our solution. You can solve for any point on the curve using the equation W equals lambda times the inverse of sigma times mu. Lambda is your risk tolerance and ranges from zero, no risk, to infinity, unlimited risk. This has been quite a bit of math, and we don't expect you to understand necessarily all of it. What is important to understand is that we are trying to match off the risk-reward in the most efficient way possible. There are millions of combinations for portfolio, but there are only a few ways to get the allocation efficient according to modern portfolio theory. Does it make sense to hold everything you own in Bitcoin? Or everything you own in Coca-Cola? Probably not. The reward of modern portfolio theory is that by diversifying in assets that have opposing correlations but positive expected returns, investors can theoretically maximize return and minimize risk. Speaking of Bitcoin, the concept of modern portfolio theory works for things like cryptocurrencies too. If you've ever thought about dabbling in cryptocurrency but don't know much about it or how much you should invest, then maybe you should look at modern portfolio theory and see if it gives you a better understanding as to where crypto belongs in your personal portfolio. Again, not every asset is right for every investor, but often by diversifying a portfolio across unrelated and uncorrelated assets, investors can add strength to their portfolios. We mentioned earlier in the video expected returns, so how exactly do we calculate that? Well, that's kind of a loaded question. The answer to this question is therefore tricky and varies from investor to investor. What matters is that you develop a working process for asset pricing and then apply that process universally when calculating your expected returns. Nobody can do this for you, and it really is the secret sauce behind a great portfolio investment strategy. But since you're watching, we weren't going to leave you completely in the dark. One way that many financial experts have used to calculate expected returns is related to some of the fundamental applications found in modern portfolio theory. We're talking about the CAPM method. CAPM stands for Capital Asset Pricing Model and is three components when calculating expected return. The formula states that your asset's expected return is equal to the risk-free rate plus the asset's beta times the expected market return minus the risk-free rate. The risk-free rate is the rate at which you can invest and receive a return on government T-bills. This is an easy number to find and is posted on the Federal Reserve website daily. The expected return of the market is what you anticipate the return of the market to be over some period of time. You can use historical returns to calculate this, or you can develop your own model to try and forecast market returns. It's entirely up to you how you approach this variable. Finally, there is beta. Beta is how much your asset varies against the market, or benchmark. Whatever you decide to use as the benchmark, it is important to remember that you will need to do it for the same asset class, and that the relationship between your asset and the benchmark is appropriate. If you're trading bonds, then you shouldn't be using the S&P 500 as the benchmark. We won't be talking about beta in depth in this video, but we can summarize it as the covariance of the asset you're measuring and the benchmark. This is all over the variance of the benchmark. In future videos, we will dive into beta and show just how simple the term really is. Honestly, this equation looks a little frightening, but it's even more shockingly simple than you'd expect. We promise. So once you have all of these components, you can put them together into your equation and get an expected return which you can apply to your return vector mu, thus completing your understanding of modern portfolio theory. We hope that you enjoyed today's video and gained some insights into the risk-reward relationship. Again, this video does not constitute investment advice, and you should talk to your investment advisor about whether modern portfolio theory is right for you. Remember, past performance is not a guarantee of future returns. And as always, if you enjoyed today's video or learned something new, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons for more great content on market-related topics. Have a great day.